Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more knowledgeable. You are more and more aware of any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you wanna be part of the program, helping uh, if you want to share a success story, contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is your number. If you have questions about the longevity products or truth skin health products, formulations, ingredients, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our phone number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertiser recommended on the program, you can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and purchase products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you want to start a longevity business, if you want to make some money, earning or earn some money make, uh, selling longevity products, you can uh, call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business if you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded. It could be a great way to quit your day job and make some money helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You could also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream at truthtreatments.com. We also have a blog, uh, blogs posted up at truthtreatments.com, skin health blogs. If you're dealing with acne blemishes, hyperpigmentation, dark spots, if you want to prevent the formation of wrinkles or even reverse wrinkles, you want to know about our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with vitamin C as well as 5% retinol. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, silicon, water, propylene glycol, vegetable oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. This is your common sense nutritional program that frees you, that frees us all from the tyranny of the medical model. The problem with the medical model and its approach to, to the body and to health and to wellness and to healing is that it doesn't respect the body as a system. A system is like a unified whole. It's made up of individual parts, all of which are necessary. This is what a system is. It's made up of a bunch of parts that are all necessary for the well-being of the system. Not just for the well-being, of, uh, not just for the well-being of the system, but for the existence of the system. If you take a part out, you no longer have the system. If you manipulate a part or poison a part, it's no longer the same system. In the case of the body, if you take a part out, if you take the gallbladder out, or if you take a breast out, or you take a uterus out, or you take a component out of the body, you no longer have the same body. And it's the, sa the same is true if you poison a part of the body with a drug. But it is the nature of the medical model to do just that, to drug the body, to excise the body, to destroy the body somehow. And then that is supposed to somehow help improve health. It cannot be this way. It doesn't work. 
you can't take a part out or poison a part or destroy a part and expect the body to be the same. And that's why it should be no surprise that a leading cause of death, maybe the leading cause of death is medicine itself, iatrogenic disease, as it is called. How can that be? That the medical model that purports to heal us is the leading cause of death. Well, because the medical model destroys the body by, nat by, by its very nature. By taking parts out or by poisoning parts, it destroys the system that we call the human body. And this is uh, the fact that, uh, that medicine is the leading cause of death is a tragic irony that is based in a combination of greed and ignorance. It's anti-humanity, and it needs to be recognized for what it is. And I don't mean to be ripping on the medical model every day, but it's just so offensive, and it is so rude. The unified nature of the body has to be respected. The unity of everything has to be respected. In quantum physics, we have unified field theory. And this whole, whole idea of everything being connected is not some kind of Boulder, Colorado hippie talk. This is hardcore biochemistry, hardcore physics. We are connected. Our body is connected. All the cells of our body are connected. We are connected to everything. It's all about connection. Our cells are self-repairing mechanisms. Our cells are self-healing mechanisms. Our cells are intelligent. Our cells are conscious. Our cells are responsive to the environment. And this responsiveness of the cells can be leveraged for our benefit, for better or worse. The responsiveness of the cells can cause disease if the cells are swimming in a toxic environment. The responsiveness of the cells can cause health and wellness if we put the cells in a healthy environment. And anybody who believes the gene theory should understand the genes turn on and off based on the, uh, the environment that the cells are sitting in. This is called epigenetics. If you want to read a really good book about epigenetics, get Dr. Wallach's book titled Epigenetics. There are epigenetic factors, that is factors that turn the genes on and off. Nutrition is an epigenetic factor. Vitamins, minerals are epigenetic factors. They turn genes on and off. Foods are epigenetic factors. They turn genes on and off. The air we breathe is an epigenetic factor. It turns genes on and off. Physical exercise is epigenetic. Stress is epigenetic. Thoughts are epigenetic. Our thoughts turn our genes on and off. Our emotions turn our genes on and off. Spirituality turns our genes on and off. These factors all communicate. They talk to the cell, which in turn communicates to the gene. Anything that is in our, in our environment, in the cell's environment, can function as an epigenetic factor. If you change the environment of a cell, it can become a different cell. If you change the environment that a cell is sitting in, it's going to secrete different substances. It's going to perform different actions. Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about this all the time. Get the book, The Biology of Belief, one of my all-time favorite books about how this thing works, about how the system works. Very easy to read. Dr. Lipton talks about uh, how when he was a uh, biology student, he took stem cells, genetically identical stem cells, stem cells that were exactly the same. He put them in a Petri dish. And by changing the medium that the cells were sitting in, by changing the Petri dish, the stuff that was in the Petri dish, he could turn a, a, a cell into either a bone cell or a muscle cell or a heart cell or a liver cell, depending on the kind of substances that were put in the medium. The cell is responsive to the environment that it is sitting in, and all disease is cell disease. This is not a medical issue. Health is not a medical issue. Unless you're in an emergency position, and, and praise God that we have emergency medicine. Emergency medicine is wonderful. And if you need something stitched up, or if, you've been, if we haven't been taking care of ourselves for, for a long period of time, for decades, we may need med medical intervention. I get this question all the time. Should I just stop taking my drugs and get on nutritional supplements? No, you should never just stop taking your drugs and get on nutritional supplements. What you want to do is you want to wean yourself off your drugs and get on a nutritional supplement program. You never want to just stop taking your drugs. Your drugs are keeping you in the game. If you've been abusing your body for uh, years or decades, your drugs are keeping you in the game. No, drugs aren't a good thing, but you, if, if you don't have any option, if the body's falling apart, you need to keep your drugs. And by the way, nutrition makes medicine work better. Nutrition doesn't counteract medicine, it makes your drugs work better, which is why once you get on a nutritional supplement program, you'll eventually be able to wean yourself off your medicines if you're on the type of medicines that are being dispensed for chronic, long-term, progressive health issues. All right.
I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 844-236-6010 Hi, is our number. Ted Anderson. All right, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, we're going to talk about polyphenols here. Oh, forgot to turn my phone off there. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about um, polyphenols here in just a minute. If you have questions about plant nutrition or polyphenols or anything we're speaking about here today, 844-236-6010 is our number, of course. If you have questions about the longevity products or truth skin health products, skin health questions, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you want to just contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, including the Beyond Tang, Tangerine, Fucoid Z, Healthy Start Pack, Glucogel Caps, any of the products that we talk about here on the program or recommend on the program, please go to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. So we have been talking about plant nutrition, phytonutrients, specifically a very important class of phytonutrients that, uh, that you're going to hear a bit more and more about. We haven't heard too much about the term polyphenols, although most folks have heard of bioflavonoids, which are the most important type of polyphenol, but there's lots of different polyphenols. More and more, they're being recognized for their really powerful nutritional and even medicinal properties. This is especially significant when it comes to the hormone estrogen, protection from excess estrogen in the case of cancer, PCOS, that's polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a really terrible uh, condition that causes acne and weight problems and hair loss and uh, uh, blood sugar issues, just, just a really miserable health challenge, reproductive issues, PMS. Endometriosis uh, can be associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. Prostate disease is a uh, estrogenic type of problem that uh, can be uh, can be uh, at least partially alleviated by using polyphenols. Countries where they eat lots of polyphenols and get lots of vegetables, Asian countries tend to have less prostate disease. All of these kinds of health issues are related to the female, so-called female hormone estrogen. If you've been listening to this program, you know I don't really consider estrogen to be a female hormone, although yes, obviously it does have a role to play in female health, and women make more estrogen than men, but female, but estrogen is more of a stress hormone than it is a female hormone. Bodybuilders and weightlifters who are concerned about estrogen can also benefit from polyphenols. Older men whose estrogen levels are sometimes higher than they should be or who are making less testosterone than they want to be, they can benefit from uh, polyphenols. Estrogen, remember, is made in body fat. The more body fat you are, you are carrying, the more likely uh, the more likely you are, be, are going to be to have a higher estrogen levels. It turns out, article just published today, actually, from uh, the Endocrine Society's 99th annual meeting in Orlando, Florida, hormones are behind hernias of the groin in elderly men, study suggests. According to Dr. Hong Zhao, PhD, the study's lead author, we have discovered that both increased estrogen and uh, increased estrogen action and decreased testosterone leads to inguinal hernia formation. Testosterone being a building substance, estrogen being a, a fibrosis-inducing substance. So using polyphenols, and we've talked about several of them, we talked about lignans, using these kinds of substances uh, can help prevent a lot of health challenges. From cancer to inguinal hernias. We talked about lignans earlier. Lignans are found in vegetables. Lignans, uh, L-I-G-N-A-N-S, lignans actually. Lignans are a little different. Lignans, L-I-G-N-A-N-S, lignans are found in vegetables, nuts, seeds, especially flax seeds. We talked about the still beans in our last program. We talked about the DES. These still beans are potentially valuable chemotherapy agents for preventing cancer. They've been shown to slow down tumor promotion and progression. 
especially as, uh, as they relate to estrogen. Last program we talked about DES, which is not a good still bean. DES is a drug version of a still bean. It's a estrogen mimicking still bean that was used for decades to prevent miscarriages. Unfortunately, DES turned out not only not to prevent miscarriages, it was also, um, it, it also caused cancer. And it didn't just cause cancer in the women who took the DES, but it took cancer in their children. It caused cancer in their children. It caused cancer even in their grandchildren. Ultimately, DES was banned in 1985. This is the problem when you start to make drugs out of natural compounds. In their natural form, molecules tend to be much more gentle, and, and uh, if, they're coming, if, if the molecules are found in foods or in plants, those molecules have cofactors which can help the, help the, the active ingredient work without causing toxicity. And this is the problem with pharmaceutical analogs of these natural substances. Probably the most famous of the still beans is a substance called resveratrol, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard of resveratrol. I first heard about it in the 1990s. That's when uh, it first started to become a darling of the nutritional supplement business. If you want to use resveratrol in the longevity product, get yourself the Cell Shield, which also has another uh, very important plant substance called quercetin, which we're going to talk about here. Uh, talk, talk about here in a little bit, and it also has turmeric, which is an absolutely mind-blowingly effective and powerful medicinal plant. Hopefully, you guys listened to uh, Kaz Ingram's interview, my interview with Kaz Ingram last week where he talked about turmeric. I've been enjoying turmeric milk since, since uh, we talked to Kaz Ingram, and it is delicious. Turmeric milk, uh, you take a couple teaspoons, four te I use four teaspoonfuls of turmeric in almond milk, put some cinnamon and some ginger, some clove, a little nutmeg, a little bit of honey, and uh, mix it all up. I actually experimented by putting a little banana in there and blending, putting it in a blender. Mmm, delicious. And almond milk is really low calorie and very, very, very filling. There's like 30 calories in an ounce of almond milk. I mean, it's ridiculously low calorie, but super filling, especially with, a, with half a banana in there and very tasty. Resveratrol, which is technically called trihydroxystilbene, if you're, if you're chemically minded, it's a type of stilbene. And uh, resveratrol has got some really interesting health benefits. It's found in grapes, certain forms of tea, berries, peanuts, soy, legumes in general. We'll get you some resveratrol. Resveratrol is a plant defensive chemical like most phytonutrients and most polyphenols. Resveratrol is produced in the plant when the plant is bruised or when it's damaged. That's why the most well-known source of resveratrol is red wine. When you bruise the grape or when you press the grape, the resveratrol, resveratrol content is increased dramatically, and, and it's the resveratrol in the wine that is uh, supposedly, at least partially, responsible for wine's numerous benefits. Resveratrol is an antioxidant. Unlike DES, the pharmaceutical version, if you will, of resveratrol, unlike DES, resveratrol can be protective against the effects of of uh, estrogen dominance or estrogen excess. Given all the problems associated with estrogen and estrogen toxicity and xenoestrogens and catechol estrogens, using resveratrol as a supplement is probably a good idea for anyone dealing with estrogen-based health issues, including autoimmune diseases, PMS, PCOS, or any other estrogen issues, estrogenic cancers. Like the other polyphenols, like the lignans, Resveratrol is used by bodybuilders and athletes. It could be used by older folks who are worried about estrogen dominance. Resveratrol also protects cholesterol from oxidation. A couple of days ago, I think it was last week, we talked about oxycholesterol. Cholesterol is not a problem. Cholesterol is non-toxic. Cholesterol, this link between cholesterol and heart disease is a bunch of nonsense, but oxidized cholesterol, now that can be a really, really serious problem, and resveratrol is protective against the oxidation of cholesterol. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. More okay, we are back on the Bright Side. We'll continue talking about resveratrol on our next Bright Side episode, and then we'll talk about a couple more of the very interesting and powerful polyphenols, plant chemicals that everybody should be ingesting on a regular basis, whether you're whether you got a health challenge or not. Plant nutrition is really, really powerful preventative medicine, and that's really the best way to take care of the body, to prevent things rather than to uh, wait for things to appear. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple interesting stories here. I want to tell you about this one is from, uh, this one really got my attention. This is from the journal Science. 
Brain study shows how slow breathing induces tranquility. How do you like that? Where have you heard that before? Stanford scientists have identified a small group of neurons, brain cells, that communicate goings on in the brain's respiratory control center to the structure responsible for generating arousal and calmness throughout the brain. Try it. Breathe slowly and smoothly and rhythmically and you will notice a pervasive sense of calm. This is one of the most powerful ways to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Most of us do not breathe this way because of the link between stress and disease. There's a very good possibility that diseases, health challenges, are at least partially caused by poor breathing techniques. Try it yourself. Sit on the couch, practice slow, deep breathing. If you have a blood pressure cuff, you can observe this not just, not just physically, but you can observe it metrically. You can actually see the measurement on, the, on your blood pressure cuff. Take your blood pressure as a baseline, sit on the couch and practice slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, and do it for like five minutes. Always exhale a little bit longer than you inhale. Try to inhale maybe five or six seconds. Exhale maybe seven or eight or nine seconds for five minutes in a rhythm. The rhythm is very important. Watch what happens to your blood pressure. Now you'll know, you don't, need, you don't need the blood pressure cuff to prove it. If you're on an antihypertensive, by the way, which are nasty, nasty drugs, this is a great way to lower your dose on your antihypertensive. Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. That's from Science, this, uh, this month's uh, edition of Science Magazine. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Bloomington, Indiana, and welcome Anthony to the bright side. Good morning, Anthony. Hey, good morning. Hey, pharmacist Ben. Um, I'm a longevity distributor, registered nurse, and I'm certified nice. as a health coach. And I just nice. must say, it has been great learning from you. I wish oh, I had you. you as a professor in nursing oh. school. And it, it was really good to meet you at the last Hoosier Jamboree event in Indy last year. And Thank by you. the way, I'm going to continue to keep you in my prayers because the good info that you're sharing, I believe, is significantly helping people. You're a quality I educator. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Anthony, and I appreciate your kind work. You know, I always say that uh, uh, or nurses, when they go to heaven, they get 200 extra points. Just like on the SATs, you get 200 points for signing your name. When you go to heaven and you're an RN, you get 200 extra points. You go to the front of the line. That's a beautiful work you're doing, buddy. Beautiful work. How can I help you, man? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I know you're on the go, and I wanted to ask what your favorite healthy on-the-go snacks are and which you would recommend to others. Ve veggies and oil. I like uh, cucumbers and pepper and oil and spices. I mix them all together. So you, and you can buy them anywhere. And I travel a lot. You're right. So I'll just go to Whole Foods or a health food store. Even just if I can't find one, I'll just go to a regular grocery store and get a cucumber. And then uh, uh, I'll buy some oil, some kind of good oil. I like to use Udo's Blend if I'm home. But if I'm not home, I'll try to find a good healthy oil uh, or coconut oil. And uh, I'll dip it in the, the, uh, uh, the celery or the cucumber or, or the uh, bell pepper into uh, some spices and then mix it up with the oil and just munch on it straight. Or uh, you know what else they have? Have you seen these olive bars they have now? Not, all, not like, they're like, I don't mean like a candy bar bar, but like a bar where they have different kinds of olives and, and, uh, and um, uh, a, a tamponade mashed up olives. Have you ever seen those things? They have them in King Super sometimes. And I'll get a scoop of tamponade, which is mashed up olives, cut up olives and oil, and then I'll dip that in the celery and then put salt or spices on there. And that's my favorite snack, and it's really filling and it's really delicious, although lately I've been enjoying turmeric, turmeric milk. Although I'm not sure how, that, how well that will travel. But I have to, I'll have to experiment with that the next time I'm on the road. That's my favorite snack, though, and very filling. And uh, the veggies are great. And, you know, I, I know the ba everybody's, a lot of folks are down on oils. But in a pinch, they're extremely satisfying and they're extremely filling. You've got to make sure the oils are fresh. You've got to make sure the oils are kept in a dark bottle, in a dark place, and also in a cold, uh, kept in the refrigerator, kept cold. But if you can find an oil that way, dipping some cucumber or pepper with a little bit of salt and uh, maybe pepper or uh, you ever hear uh, Tony Chachery spice? It's kind of a, a southern spice. Uh, you can buy that at, at most grocery stores. At most grocery stores. I use that sometimes as well. Thanks for asking, Anthony. Anything else, man? That should be it. Thank you very All right, much. Buddy. Thanks for the kind words. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. God. All right. Take, oh, I didn't mean to hang up on you. I'm sorry, Anthony. All right. Let's go to Rose in West Virginia. Good morning, Rose. Oh, good morning. 
Good morning. Um, I I have a um, a success story. A friend of mine was uh, uh, diagnosed with cytomegalovirus years ago. I'm uh, I guess about ten years ago, eight to ten, and finally went on a had a persistent problem with it, persistent cough for you know the whole time I knew her, at least eight years, and she was then uh, decided to to do the bone broth diet, mm. and she did the twenty days. And the cough disappeared. That's after awesome. Eight years. How awesome is that? Yeah. It was just it was just the bone broth or the bone broth protein. Uh, no, she was doing the bone broth diet, and uh, luckily enough, she happens to raise her own beef. Her and her husband, so she was able to get her homegrown uh, beef and just doing the broth. That is awesome. Thank you for yep. sharing that. That's yeah, really it was cool. Incredible, incredible. And then I I had a question. Sure. For myself, um, last year I was diagnosed, I had a stroke and was diagnosed with thrombocytopenia, okay. which is uh, unusual being that I'm not a smoker. And uh, I had kind of a theory about it. I just wanted to get your take on this. Okay. I had gone through, uh, oh, God, I, I kind of calculated about 12, 13 years of not having a car and riding my bike every day to and from work and errands and whatnot. And so I was getting, you know, a ton of exercise. And then I went to the opposite extreme. I moved to West Virginia and was dependent on a vehicle and was not getting the same. And I wondered if that had anything to do, you know, Mm. the... Well, thrombocytopenia is a uh, deficiency of blood clotting factors, platelets in the blood. Platelets are little pieces of blood cells that act to help clot the blood. So when you have this condition, uh, you can have bleeding into the tissues and uh, slow clotting, and it can cause, it can definitely cause a stroke. I would say I would be focusing more on the liver. Uh, per, uh, that's usually what. That's usually the first thing to think of when you have thrombocytopenia, and that, of course, is a, is a digestive organ. The liver is. So I would ask you a couple questions. Are you? Uh, do you have any digestive health issues? Do you have a history of constipation no, or anything like no, that? No, nothing at all. Are you? Any... Were you on any prescription drugs? No, no. Any blood? Any blood sugar issues? Uh, I have always been um, uh, kind of uh, hypoglycemic. You know, I have to eat all the time because my blood sugar dry. And my couple of my family members have that same issue, or they kind of crash. Uh, that's what I would, I would be suspecting that it had something to do with the liver or blood sugar. I mean, the liver and blood sugar can definitely affect the liver. That would be my suspicion. Um, it could be anything, really, but that would be the first thing I would think of. If you have thrombocytopenia, a deficiency of platelets, what you want to do is you want to look for other symptoms. Now, I imagine that, has that condition been corrected? Are you still thrombocytopenic? Rose? Rose? Do we have Rose? What happened to Rose there? All right. I'm, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We got. Oh, hang on, Rose. I want to ask you a couple questions when we come back. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay. We are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844 236 6010 is our number. We got a couple lines open for you. We're talking to Rose in West Virginia. Rose, are you there, ma'am? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. I, so- I just wanted to clear something up about as far as uh, when I was in the hospital, they have been taking. Uh, units of blood off me, that, you know, excess red blood cell production. Mm, that's kind of interesting. Now you were Wait. making too, you were making too many red blood cells. Yes, yes. That's a, you. That's that's it. When the body makes too many red blood cells, that's a mechanism that it has for trying to provide more oxygen to an area that's not getting oxygenated. Well, so all that yeah. tells me there was there's some kind of inflammation that's going on. And oh. I would I would be guessing that there's an issue in uh, a liver issue. The big oh. the most important problem with thrombocytopenia or the most important cause uh, involves suppression, uh, bone marrow suppression of the of the uh, red blood cells which are made in the bone marrow, and this can be caused by iron overload. Uh, if you're not assuming that it's not a drug, it's not drug or alcohol no, induced. No, no, I've okay. never taken it. Okay, so assuming it's not that, it, it can be caused by iron overload, which is a liver problem. Too much iron in the blood, uh, and so I'm guessing that yeah, there was something going on in the liver, and it probably has something to do with inflammation. And whenever you have, inf- uh, whenever you hear those two words, inflammation and liver, the first thing you want to think about is either food or sugar. The fact that you have some insulin resistance going on, or some elevated insulin, I should say. Uh, that tells me there's probably some kind of liver problem. It may be secondary to sugar 
or it may be secondary to some kind of digestive health issue. You got to look for other symptoms. Thrombocytopenia is a secondary symptom. It's not a primary okay. symptom. So you got to look for primary symptoms, and those are always going to be blood sugar related or digestive system related. Sometimes adrenal stress is involved, but usually it involves the digestive system and the blood sugar system oh, primal. Those I have are, been under a lot of stress. Well, that's not helping. The, that's not helping matters, yeah. but it's not probably not the cause. Okay. The cause is probably in the digestive system and the blood sugar somewhere in there. All right, Rose, thank you so okay. much for your call. Appreciate it. And thanks for the success story. Appreciate that as well. All right, let's move on to Brian in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Good morning, Brian. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yeah, good morning. Hey, uh, I'm 73, and I was wondering what I can do to get some testosterone going. Okay, I have good, no good libido, question. and I got belly fat, no energy. Yeah, we got to get rid of that belly fat first and foremost. So let's do a couple things. First of all, uh, most important thing is to reduce your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates, sugars, processed foods, those kinds of things, and then to help the body, help the body use those, uh, help the body utilize sugar or process sugar using things like selenium. It turns out, by the way, that the nutrients that help your body process sugar also support testosterone. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone by using selenium, by using zinc. Selenium, maybe 400 or 600 micrograms a day. You can get the ultimate selenium off our website, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com or, or brightsideben.com. 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate can be helpful for, the, for both reasons. Niacin, likewise, use the ultimate niacin from longevity. Again, Brian, this is for handling blood sugar as well as for supporting testosterone. And all of this will help you lose some body fat, too. Um, uh, the sweeties, that goes without saying. The chromium and vanadium are must-haves for anybody who's dealing with blood sugar issues. And then using, uh, going ketogenic. Ketogenic, the ketogenic diet will do a couple things for you. Actually, do three things for you. The ketogenic diet will help lower your blood sugar. The ketogenic diet will uh, act like a starvation diet, so it will stimulate the production of growth substances, including testosterone. And the ketogenic diet will uh, knock some weight off of you. It's a low-calorie diet. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat low carbohydrate, low calorie diet. So you can get multiple benefits by going ketogenic. You also want to do a little bit of resistance training, getting yourself in the gym. And, and I'm not talking about just a walk around the block. I'm talking about really doing some resistance type training where you're in the no pain, no gain category. You don't, you don't have to spend hours at the gym. You only need 10 or 15 minutes uh, on a maybe four or five, or four day a week basis. You can even do stairs to get some resistance training. Just uh, carry a, a backpack with some books in it or uh, put a bat or maybe a couple of jugs of water gallon jugs of water as you're walking up the stairs or maybe some some ankle weights or something like that just to get some resistance on the system when the body is under resist when the uh, musculoskeletal system has some resistance that's when it grows muscle a sedentary lifestyle does exactly the opposite last but not least you can also use some of these estrogen blocking strategies that we've been talking about. Uh, things like the polyphenols have estrogen blocking properties. Flaxseed oil, resveratrol uh, has estrogen blocking properties. Chrysin and tribulus are herbs that might help you. Um, let's see what else. There's a, a substance called DIM, DIM, that you can get, or also one called I3C that also has estrogen blocking properties. And then last but most certainly not least, you might want to try a little progesterone cream and perhaps even vitamin E which acts to antagonize or block estrogen, and also vitamin A. So 400 international units of vitamin E and 20,000 international units of vitamin A. And then uh, uh, one more thing, calorie restriction. That goes along with the ketogenic diet. But calorie restriction tends to stimulate the production of growth substances, including testosterone. All right, man. Hope that helps, Brian. Hey, Good luck with everything. Hey, God bless the, you. Uh, vitamin E, where do you, where do you get that with the eight forms of it? Uh, you can get something called mixed tocotrienols, and mixed tocopherols. I don't know of any one vitamin E supplement that has all eight in them. There may be out there, they may be out there but I haven't seen them. Yeah. Uh, but, but you can definitely get, uh, you can get mixed tocopherols that have all four and then mixed tocotrienols that have okay. all four and mix the two together. And then Andrew take 400, the they advertise that on your station. Uh, Does it have all eight? For testosterone. Uh, you know, I don't know what that product is. I don't. I don't listen to the ads. There was a drug driver on there. Same thing. He had belly fat, and he said it all went down in no time, about two months. And uh, I'm a little skeptical of those kinds of formulas, but I can't say yay or nay because I don't know exactly what yeah. that is. But I tend to be a little skeptical. Hey, hey last thing on a cortisol. Uh, is there any way to check that, like you do blood sugar? 
Uh, yeah, they can do saliva cortisol tests. The problem with cortisol is your cortisol levels change during the day, so they have to do they have to take uh, multiple points during the day. So your cortisol levels tend to be higher uh, in the morning, and then they tend to drop towards the end of the day. Uh, so you got to take different multiple points. You got to take a cortisol saliva test in the morning, then you got to do it in the afternoon, then you got to do it in the evening because they fluctuate. So but yes, you can like do a pH drip then. Uh, that uh, no, I don't know that. I, I don't have any. Home, I don't know of any home cortisol tests that you can do. But they, oh. a naturopath can certainly do them, or a chiropractor, or even an MD. Yeah. Okay, and all those supplements that we talked about, like the vitamin E and the vitamin A, they also will help antagonize cortisol, too. Also, hey, the ketogenic hey, diet. Flaxseed oil, what does that do? Flaxseed oil does awesome things. It's a source of omega-3 fatty acids, most importantly. It's also, if you, uh, if you get the right kind of flaxseed oil, you get a little vitamin E in there. And then also, it has lignans, L-I-G-N-A-N-S, which can help balance out estrogen. Flaxseed oil is awesome stuff. You hey, do got to make sure it's fresh. Uh, you got to make sure it's fresh because it oxidizes pretty quickly. Uh, so you got to make sure it's fresh. Twelve that's got cobalamin in it. Is there any way to get something that's better? Because that's like cobalt. No, yeah, co you know, yeah co there's nothing wrong with cobalt. It's an essential nutrient. It's one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. You oh. know, there's. I think you're thinking of cyanide, the cyanocobalamin. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I think you're. Cyanamine or something. Yeah, it's got cyanide in it, and some people will claim that the cyanide in there can can stress out the system. I don't. I'm not really buying that. There's cyanide in broccoli, and there's cyanide in cruciferous vegetables. So you know, I'm not buying that cyanocobalamin is that much of a problem. But you can use methyl cobalamin if you don't want to use the cyanocobalamin. I think Dr. Ingram's got to be something that might be. He might. Uh, you know, Dr. Ingram. If if Dr. Ingram recommends it, I I would have no problem with it. That guy is on the ball. He knows the stuff. Super. Brian, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go, buddy. I want to get a couple more calls in. Thank Have you so one. much, man. Good luck with everything. All right, let's go to Betsy in, in Pennsylvania. She's been hanging on for a long time there. Good morning, Hello. Betsy. Thanks uh, for your patience. Good morning. Thank you. Um, first, I'm impressed, Pharmacist Ben, by your knowledge and empathy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I uh, appreciate it. And um, uh, I need help, please, with lifelong okay. chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal oh. exhaustion. Okay. Are you drinking coffee or anything like that? Nope. Nothing to stimulate the adrenal glands because coffee will give you a buzz in the short run, but it will definitely cause fatigue in the long run. So that's first of all. Secondly, uh, you can't approach chronic fatigue until you work on the digestive system and the blood sugar system and also the uh, adrenal thyroid complex. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas, but you really got to focus on digestive health and blood sugar health. First of all, uh, you might want to consider uh, looking at uh, digestive toxicity. So, uh, in other words, food allergies and food toxins, if you have a history oh, yeah. of digestive, well, there you go. That's probably a big, part, big <laughs> cause of it. Uh, so you want to do an eliminate, a food a fast and then a food diary and elimination diet or a Swero V cleanse and then a food diary and an elimination diet. So you'll fast for a couple days. The chances are very good that if you have a long history of digestive health issues, that when you fast, you're going to feel better because for the first time, toxins are not going to be entering into the blood. So uh, uh, Swero V cleanse, half a bottle of Swero V every hour for um, maybe 12, 24, 48 hours, as long as you can do it. And then when you start eating again, look for, uh, start with your favorite foods, look for problems, and then eliminate those foods, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, etc. Stabilizing the blood sugar is also incredibly, incredibly important. Low blood sugar, of course, will cause chronic fatigue. Maybe use the ketogenic diet. Try to substitute protein or fat for the carbs if you're eating a lot of bread and pasta and those kinds of foods. Stay away from processed bars and cereals and anything that spikes your blood sugar because that will also cause chronic fatigue issues. Betsy, I'm just out of time. I wish I had more time for you. Um, uh, just slow deep breathing also to relax the adrenal glands. That may also help you. Thanks for your call and the kind words. I appreciate it. I wish I had more time on this program, but we are just flat out of minutes on the bright side. Thanks for listening, friends. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day.